Danny Kinnan. Hmm. Good morning, conference. I've been asked to be very short so that we can catch up on timings. But I want to get various points across. There's much in legacy that needs to be fought for. We've just heard great words from Chloe Smith saying that she will work hard on the legacy issues and we've got to, as a party, make sure that we keep that pressure on. Having that former members pass, which gets you into the House of Commons, I am determined to make sure that all military matters are kept on the agenda and that the Ulster Unionist point of view is put across at all times. But you've not come here today to listen to me. You've come here to listen to many speakers, but particularly I'd like you to welcome Mark Tipper. But before he comes up and speaks, I'd like to give you a little bit of the context of Mark and the work that he's been doing. Many of you will know that I have a close link to the bomb that went off in Hyde Park. I had been the best man to Anthony Daly four weeks beforehand. Anthony had become one of my greatest friends over the three years that we'd known each other. One of those people you laugh, you joke, you tease, you just click, you, you get on together. And he'd stood in that day for somebody else who was needed elsewhere. And he was killed instantly. The court case in July, in fact, the bombing rather in July, was designed by the IRA to take away the euphoria from the Falklands victory and from the great work that our servicemen had done there. The bombing killed seven members of the Royal Green Jackets Band and four members of the Blues and Royals, the Household Cavalry, all there on ceremonial duty. John Downey was taken to court and let off because of the production of one of those on-the-run letters that we've heard will stand no position in the future. But that letting off is what drove Mark Tipper and the families to campaign and make sure that civil action was possible. Mark and the other families have worked tirelessly, determinedly, to raise the funding. They raised 85,000 through crowdfunding, much of that from people here in Northern Ireland, in five pounds, 10 pounds, 20, and much more. And we owe a huge debt of gratitude to all of them. But that funding is what has allowed us to get the case through to its first stages. He will tell you much, much more, and I'm not going to go into it in much more detail, because you'll hear, if I can put it that way, from the horse's mouth, from someone who will speak bluntly, put it to you how it is as a family, families that have been destroyed by the bomb, that have had little help from the government, and it is their issues that we must keep force fighting with the government to make sure it's listened to, to make sure that victims are looked after to and to make sure that this case goes ahead and that we have justice. So Mark, you and your wife Joanne are very, very grateful. I know you are nervous. We've got a nice friendly crowd here. Come and give it the best. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hello, my name is Mark Tipper. I'd like to thank the UUP for my invitation to address you here today, especially Danny Kinahan and everyone else attending. Some of you within this room may not have been born when I lost my brother, Trooper Simon Tipper, to an IRA car bomb in Hyde Park. That day and date will remain with us forever. Three other serving members of this proud regiment were also murdered that day. Lieutenant Anthony Daly, Corporal Major Roy Bright, and Lance Corporal 
Geoffrey Young. Seven of the household cavalry horses were also killed. Our loved ones pledged their lives to this country, yet one government after another has turned its back on them and us. Over the, thir over the following 31 years, my family and I have had to somehow learn to come to terms with the fact that no one has ever been successfully convicted for the terrorist atrocity that murdered my brother and his fellow soldiers. Then, on the 22nd of May 2013, John Downey was arrested at Gatwick Airport. Maybe, at last, we could find justice at the Old Bailey. But Tony Blair made sure this wasn't going to happen. What we didn't know is that he had sat down in Downing Street with Jonathan Powell and Sinn Féin, and Sinn Féin members and hatched the Hon the Run letters, which made sure Downey would walk free. All Downey had to do was produce his get out of jail free card and then the court let him go. We were robbed of learning whether Downey was guilty or not of who was really responsible for murdering our loved ones. We were denied justice. We met with Dominic Grieve, who was the Attorney General. We met with Lady Justice Hallett. We then sat through the Northern Ireland's Select Affairs Committee investigation to the on the run letters. All in power, blaming the PSNI and Mr Norman Baxter. I knew, was at, I knew who was at fault for this trial collapsing, one man and one man alone, Mr Blair. In the end, it was found that giving down his letter had been a cat catastrophic error. Still, nothing was done about it. Hopefully, they were thinking within government, this one would go away. How wrong they are. The families of these victims of the Hyde Park bombing have stronger resolve than that and we will fight to the end to ensure justice is served. <laughs> Deep within my heart, I knew the families deserve justice. The Omar victims had never given in and never would. I researched how they had taken out a civil prosecution against the terrorists who had committed this disgusting, evil atrocity. The name Matt Jury at McEwen Partners came up as their solicitor, whom I contacted. This was the turning point for the Hyde Park bombing families. At last, someone was on our side, willing to fight for us, not charging us a penny, not taking no for an answer, no matter what obstacles have been laid in his way. The first time since 1982, that we received any help. We started work preparing to take our own civil case against the man who was still the chief suspect, Downey. We don't want compensation. I don't want a penny. That would be blood money. We just want the truth. We have a right to know who was responsible for our loved one's murders. The public have a right to know who carried out one of the worst terrorist attacks on British soil. But to do so, we needed legal aid. The Legal Aid Agency keep laying obstacles in the way of Sarah Jane Young, who is one of the finest people you could wish to meet, only three at the time of the bombing, who actually saw the blast and the aftermath, injured, dead soldiers. She will not mind me saying that the following years have not been easy. She is more than entitled to Legal Aid, this being supported by a High Court judge. Still no Legal Aid for her. Hopefully the powers that will be will come to their senses and, how, and allow her what she deserves, justice. Only legal, aid, only legal aid will allow this. The chief suspect himself received £50,000. Drummer Lee Rigby's killers received £200,000. A terrorist who cannot be named from Jordan, who was jailed for, not, for nine years, got £250,000 to fight his deportation. Abu Qatada. £500,000 in legal aid. I could keep going. One thing though, this is taxpayers' money. Let's ask them how Sean McNally, Chief Executive of the Legal Aid Agency, should divide our hard earned pennies. I know for sure that the Hyde Park Justice Campaign would now have been funded had the funding been granted by a show of hands from the public. And it was the public we finally had to. It was the public we finally had to turn to to start the legal aid action against Downey. 
With the help of the Sun newspaper and Crowd Justice, thousands have been raised so far by generous donations. I thank everyone who has shown support to this case and given so generously. One thing that would help us greatly is to learn the truth of who was responsible and see them all to account. But rather than ease our pain, the government has just made it worse. The chief suspect walked free from the Old Bailey because of a shameful and secret deal by Tony Blair with the IRA. Because of this, we've been forced to take out our own private legal action. Instead of backing us, the Legal Aid Agency has refused again and again to fund this case on irrational grounds, including absurdly that justice in this case isn't in the public interest. How can it be, not be in the public interest to bring suspected terrorists to trial? We have been made victims three times over, first by the bomb, then by Blair, and now by the bureaucrats of the Legal Aid Agency. Over the years, after every terrorist attack, we've seen governments pledge the victims and survivors every support. They promise to leave no stone unturned to bring the killers to justice. The tragedy is that, all too quickly and often, these commitments are forgotten. The fact that our government does not do enough for victims of terrorism in this country, there's not enough long-term support and care. We've never been offered any of these. But worst of all, there's not enough access to justice. Sometimes state prosecutions fail or cannot be bought. We understand that, but when they do, the victims should be given every support possible to bring their own legal actions. Instead, we're blocked at every turn, and it leaves us wondering whose side is the government on? What message are we sending to terrorists if we say, you can attack our capital, murder our troops, police and innocent civilians, and be left to walk free and not answer for your crimes? Where will, the, where will the British victims of Mumbai, Tunisia or Paris atrocities be in 30 years' time? Unless our government does more and takes its responsibilities to victims more seriously, the risk is they will be where we are now, without support, without justice and having to resort to begging the British public for help. Why does our government abandon our victims so routinely? Why do we continue to let it? All we are seeking is the, tra the truth about who murdered our loved ones. The only way to do this is to bring the chief suspect to court, a man who has been linked by police files to six separate terrorist attacks. £400 million in government money and legal aid was spent on the Savile inquiry. We are asking for just 0.2% of that amount to determine the truth about the murder of four British soldiers at the hands of terrorists. When it comes to justice, it begs the question, is a British soldier's life worth less? To make matters worse, all the while, the state continues to pay for endless inquiries, inquests and court hearings against veterans of our armed forces and security services. Any unlawful killing should be investigated and prosecuted to the fullest extent. This imbalance, inequality and injustice must come to an end. Appeasing one terrorist group can only encourage another. Thanks to our legal team's dedication and commitment, despite all the hurdles placed in their way, papers have now been served on Downey, they've kept our case alive, and we're making a new application to the Legal Aid Agency. If we're to, if we're to continue with our case, our only hope is that it will now do the right thing and support us. As victims, this never goes away, it never will. Michael Pedersen, who rode, Saf who rode Sefton on that tragic day. I knew Michael. I could never imagine that he would take his children's lives and his own. My friend Simon Utley, who suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, struggles daily. 20th of July, 82, this first man's duty for the Blues and Royals. And it was his last. I know that this man who served Queen and Country is not being looked after by the people who would have put him on the front line. I think maybe the children of today need to know of the past atrocities as our world becomes more dangerous. They will need to know how to deal with terror and terrorists in a fully justifiable way, which is a law court, not a man sat in down in the street 
thinking, I am Lord and Master. Unless you have been a victim of terror, it is difficult to understand how we feel. Your closest friends try, but can only listen. Having recently joined the South East for Manor Foundation, who now have an office on the mainland, I, as a victim, now have someone who can offer me help, which has never been in place before. More funding is required for these organisations and any others that are supporting victims of terrorism. More funding is needed to give victims like us access to justice. Ministers, please, please listen, we need them. These people understand the pain that never goes away. Hopefully, the families and myself will see justice in the not too distant future. We can sleep more easily and so will those four brave men from that fateful day. <laughs>